Around the 10th century, Western music looked like this. If you want to learn more about why medieval music looked this way, check out this video on how the music clefs got their shapes. Now, if this was written in modern notation, it would look something like this. These were the only notes being used in conventional Western music at the time. 20 notes, plus two accidentals, and each note had its own name. I'm not talking like today's music where each note is one of the seven letters of the musical alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, or G. No, each one of these notes had a particular name, which included the note name, but also its positions in the hexachord system. For example, this D below middle C is called D so re, and this G above middle C is called G so re ut. All of the notes followed this convention, beginning with the note name and then its positions in the hexachords. With this system, each note has a unique name. This is where the Guidonian hand comes in. If you search the internet for Guidonian hand, odds are you'll find something like this. A scan from a music manuscript dating back to the 10th or 11th century. But it's easier to show you how the Guidonian hand worked on an actual three-dimensional hand. Beginning on the thumb of the left hand, you would start with the lowest note, gamma ut, then going down the joints of the thumb, a re and b mi. The rest of the notes followed a spiral pattern around the hand, going up the pinky, across the fingers, and then circling back around. Since most of the music at the time was taught by rote, this was a simple tool musicians could learn to help them remember the notes and to help them sight sing music. I ended up making a couple more hands for this project. If you want to see how that process went, check out this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and please subscribe.